All right. Uh, this is take number three. It's our uh, third and final video on how to share the scriptures with people uh, to help them gain a proper relationship with God. So again, uh, you approach your friend. Let's say your friend is um, Joaquin. Yo, Joaquin, man, uh, I got a spiritual question for you, bro. Are you are you up for it? Joaquin might say, nah, man, I don't feel like talking about that. You say, all right, man, I'll catch you at a different time. That's cool. And you just leave it at that, right? If he says, yeah, man, I'm up for it. What's up? You say, Joaquin, have you ever thought about where you're going when you die, man? Like heaven, hell, purgatory? Like, have you ever thought about any of that? Joaquin might say, nah, man, I don't think about stuff like that. Say, well, listen, bruh, I know it ain't really fun to think about dying. I don't like to think about it either, but we all going that way eventually. So we ought to probably stop and think about that, bruh, and try to get that right. Um, listen, if you ever want to talk about that, God loves you and he wants you to go to heaven and spend eternity with him. That's why he created you. I would love to show you how you can definitely know you're going to heaven. Uh, take me about 10 minutes, man, if you want to do it after we clock out today, uh, after work or, or after we finish hooping or whatever, right? Set up a time with Joaquin. Or if he doesn't want to set up a time, just say, okay, well, if you ever want to talk about it, holler at me, man. I'd love to talk to you about it, right? All right. So if he says, um, yeah, I'm definitely going to heaven, you say, well, that's great, man. Why you say that? And he said, well, I'm a good person, blah, blah, blah. You say, well, listen, bro, uh, are you serving Christ? Well, you know, I'm, I'm doing the best I can. Well, listen, the Bible says you must be born again. You know what that is? You know, open up the conversation. Now, once you get him to where you uh, he's interested, you can set up a time with him after work. Hey, you want to meet like 10 minutes early for work tomorrow or whatever? Uh, set up a time with him when you can talk to him, right? Or if you guys are just chilling at the ball court or whatever, you can just say, yo, man. Why don't you come over here and sip some of this Gatorade? Let me holler at you for about 10 minutes so I can show you how you can definitely know you're going to heaven, man. Because you don't want to be playing around. I think I'm going to heaven. I might be going to heaven. You want to make sure about that. So, you know, you get him, you know, away, right? So then um, once you sit him down, then you can talk to him and you can share these things with him. So here's what you share. You say, all right, so you want to go to heaven, right? Yeah, man, I want to go to heaven. Exactly. Everybody does, right? But listen, um, let me show you something about heaven. Everybody wants to go to heaven, but let me show you something about heaven that's really important, bro. Um, Revelation 21 and uh, verse 18 talks about heaven, uh, the city in heaven. Revelation 21, 18. The construction of its walls was of jasper. Right? It's like a stone, pretty stone. And the city was pure gold, like clear glass. Verse 19, the foundations of the wall of the city were adorned with all kinds of precious stones. The first foundation of the city was jasper, the second sapphire, the third sharp chalcedon, the fourth emerald, the fifth sardonyx. So it goes on just to describe the city, right, and how beautiful it is, right? Verse 22 says, I saw no temple in, in it. There's no churches in heaven. You won't need no church. You're, you're with God in heaven, right? I saw no temple in it. For the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb, the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, are its temple. Verse 23, the city had no need of the sun or of the moon to shine in it. You don't need the sun or the moon. For the glory of God illuminated it. The Lamb is its light. God is the light of the city. Verse 24, and the nations of those who who are saved shall walk in its light and the kings of the earth bring their glory and honor into it so people from all around the world are going to come to this city um, its gates shall not be shut um, at all by day there shall be no night there so there's no night time in heaven at all and the gates never shut Gate to the city back in the day when this was written, they closed the gate to the city so no, you know, robbers and armies can come in and destroy the city, right? But you'll, there's no need for that in heaven. Verse 26 and 27. And they shall bring the glory and the honor of the nations into it. The glory and the honor of the nations are people from all around the nations. That's the glory and the honor of the nations. That's people. Verse 27. Here's, the, here's what I want you to see, uh, Joaquin. Check this out. 
but there shall be no there shall by no means enter it anything that defiles to defile means makes it dirty now this is a King James Bible for you who are looking you don't have to use a King James Bible because it has a lot of words people don't understand but you can but if you if you use a King James Bible make sure you're explaining words like defile because people don't say that anymore right all right so check this out Joaquin but there shall by no means enter it anything that defiles. To defile means to make something dirty. To defile something. Nothing's going into the city that's not perfectly clean. Nothing's going into the city that's going to dirty up the city. Nothing will go in that defiles or causes an abomination. Nothing's going to go in that's sinful or an abomination. Or a lie. See that? Or a lie. Nobody who's a liar is going to go into the city. But only those who, who are written in the Lamb's book of life. Nobody's getting into heaven that's, that's got dirt, man, that's got sin. We got to do something to get our sin taken care of before we try to go into heaven. Because God ain't allowing our sin into heaven. Our lies and, and the things that we do that are dirty. You know what I mean? That are not clean, that are not righteous, that are not to God's uh, liking. So nobody gets into heaven uh, with sin. And check this out. Let me show you the opposite of heaven. Because we all want to go to heaven, but there's an opposite. Everybody, you know, you ever seen people when they die, um, and I'm talking the whole time I'm flipping, right, so I don't lose his attention. So you ever seen people sometimes when they die, um, everybody always says, well, he's gone to a better place. He's gone to heaven. Everybody don't go to heaven, man. That's nice to say at a funeral so you don't upset people, but everybody ain't going to heaven, right? Because the Bible says right here, if your sin is not taken care of before you get there, you ain't bringing your sin in heaven. You got to go to hell with that sin. So look at the same chapter, chapter 21, verse 8 of Revelation. Look at the opposite of heaven is hell. And look who goes to hell. The Bible says, but the cowardly, that's people who are too ashamed, too afraid to stand up for Jesus, Unbelieving, that's atheists and people who don't believe in God. Abominable, people who just do nasty, wicked stuff. Murderers, sexually immoral. Some Bibles might say fornicator or adulterer. That's just people who don't, who sleep with people who they're not married to, right? Sorcerers, that's people who do witchcraft. Idolaters, that's pretty much everybody because idolatry means you have an idol. You have something that's more important to you than God. You know, it might be your girlfriend, might be your car, might be your house, your job, might be yourself. Anything you spend more time, money, energy, and thought on than you do God means that you consider that thing more important than God, and that becomes your God, and you become an idolater. That's your idol. So everybody's guilty of that to some degree. And look what this says. Sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars. Dude, that's everybody, bruh. That's everybody. All liars. So all these sins are not the only sins that take people to hell, but God is just saying, if you live a life full of sin, this is what happens to you. Uh, cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone. The lake that burns with fire and brimstone? What is that? That's hell, bruh. Which is the second death. The Bible says no sin is going to heaven. So if you have sin and you lying and cheating and cussing and drinking and carousing and sleeping with people you ain't got no business sleeping with and, and loving things above loving God and you live in your own life, Instead of living the life that God wants you to, if you're living a life of sin, you don't go to heaven. You go to the lake that burns with fire and brimstone. And the Bible calls that the second death. Because you die once physically, and then your soul goes to hell to die twice, the second death. Only that death lasts for eternity. You, you die forever in torment and misery in hell. So check this out. So you see heaven, and you see hell. And here's what God did. I'm going to turn to Isaiah real quick. Isaiah 53. Here's what God did to make sure 
that we have a choice between heaven and hell because without this, we'd all go to hell. We wouldn't even have a choice, right? We just all go to hell with our sin. But the Bible says God sent Jesus, his son, to die on the cross to pay the penalty for our sin so that we won't have to pay the penalty for our own sin, which is hell. And so now we have a choice to either uh, go to heaven or go to hell because we can accept Jesus Christ and the penalty that he paid for us or not. We have a choice. So check this out. Uh, Isaiah 53, I'm going to start at verse 5. The Bible says, He was bruised for our iniquities. All right, so he was beaten, beat down, nails in his hands and feet, crown of thorns, sword through his side. They put a bag on his head and punched him. They spit on him. He was bruised for our iniquities. Iniquities is just a fancy word for sin, right? Iniquity specifically means a sin you know you don't have any business doing, but you do it anyway. That's an iniquity. So he was beat up and bruised and crucified for our sin. He didn't have any sin of his own. He was paying the penalty for our sin. Right? And then, uh, oh, here's the other part of the verse. But he was wounded for our transgressions. I almost forgot that part. He was wounded, again, hands, feet, crown of thorns. He was wounded for our transgressions. A transgression is just a sin that you commit that you didn't even know you were committing. Right? So he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our sin. And the chastisement for our peace, chastisement just means the punishment, for our peace was upon him. So what does that mean? It means we were not at peace with God. We're at odds with God because of our sin. But he was beaten and bruised and punished, chastised, for our peace so that our sin would be uh, paid for. And now we could be cool with God. We could be on God's side now. We don't have to be on odds with God because our sin doesn't separate us from God anymore because it's paid for. So that's what it means by the punishment uh, for our peace was upon Jesus. And by his stripes, those whips he got, we are healed. We are spiritually healed, right? So listen, um, Jesus Christ... And I'm done, bro. Let me just get you for a couple more minutes. Listen, we're all sinners, bro. Right? And we got to get our sin taken care of before we go to heaven or we don't get in. Jesus Christ died on the cross to pay the penalty for your sin and my sin. If we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior and are willing to make him the king of our lives, not live our own life, but, but follow him, when we accept him, we automatically accept his payment for our sin. So our sin is automatically paid for when we accept him. It's a package deal. Uh, when we receive him, we automatically receive his payment for our sin. It's credited to our spiritual account. So when we go to heaven and we stand before God on judgment day, whenever it is that we die, God's going to have two groups of people. He's going to have this group of people. He's going to say, yo, man, you guys are sinners. You guys live, you know, you guys are sinful. Uh, and I can see here that you guys never, while you were living, accepted my son Jesus as your Lord and your King. So you always just lived your own life the way you wanted to live it. So now, since your sin hasn't been paid for, you got to go now and pay for your sin. And that means in hell. And that means eternity. Now, you guys over here, you guys are just as sinful as those guys. Right, But I can see here, according to the records, that at some point in your life, you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and your King, and you no longer lived your own life. You, you uh, followed Jesus with your life. And so you accepted him, so uh, you get his payment credited to your behalf, and although you are still sinners, you get to go in, because your sin is paid for. you got to decide which one of those groups you want to be a part of, man. Are you? So let me just ask you straight up, bro. Are you ready? To give your life to Jesus? Is that something you're ready to do? Because it is a big decision. And they might say, nah, I ain't ready for that. You say, okay, that's cool. Well, listen, bro. Think about it. Pray about it. If you want to talk about it some more, holler at me. Talk to me whenever. I'm, I'm here for you. Uh, you can come to church with me. I'll come scoop you up. We'll go to church anytime you want. If you want to hear more about it, my pastor's pretty good at explaining it. And if he says yes, you say, well, listen, here's a Bible, man. I got some Bibles in my trunk. 
Sometimes I give them my Bible. Listen, if you're going to follow Christ, you need to know what he wants you to do. So here's a Bible. Start at John, right? Show them where John is, and I'll get you some more Bible study material. And also we'll hook up later on in the week and see if we can't, if you want to come to church with me, if you like my church, or if I can help you find a church so you can go ahead and start your new life. And congratulations, Joaquin. I, I think that's great, man, that you've given your life to Jesus. You don't have to lead him in a sinner's prayer, although you can if you want to, but you don't have to because it ain't even about the prayer. And then um, say, so cool. So if you, that way, now that you serve in Christ, if you die and you seriously serve in Christ, you don't have to worry about going to hell, right? So that's cool. All right, man, so I'll holler at you. I'll see you tomorrow at work. All right, have a good night, man. Peace. And I'm out. So that's another way to share Jesus. Um, you can mix and match scriptures and explain it however you want, but that's three different ways I think I gave you. Um, if you have any questions, um, I'm at 904-322-2693. Um, and so God bless you and go win somebody to Jesus, man.